Just, a just as a reminder, we will be recording this webinar and it will be available to download on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Okay, with that, I will now turn it over to our membership director, Lisa Smothers. Thank you, Marisa. Being an officer is one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences that a student can have as a member of FBLA PBL. It takes commitment and responsibility, but it's also a lot of fun. FBLA and PBL members may run for office at the local level, the state level, or the national level. Local and state guidelines for running for office are different with every chapter in every state. Check with your local and state advisors for information and guidelines. At the national level, there are eight FBLA national officers and eight PBL national officers that are elected at the annual National Leadership Conference each year. The parliamentarian for each team is an appointed position. The person who files an application and has the highest test score on the parliamentary procedure's written exam is appointed to this position. There is a national parliamentarian for each team. The National Officer Candidate Guide, which contains the requirements and guidelines for all national officer candidates, is located on the home page of the national website at www.fbla-pbl.org. Before you can lead others, you must be able to lead yourself. In FBLA PBL, this is made available and recognized through an understanding of our organization and the many benefits and opportunities that it provides. Being a great leader is inspiring those around you. This first means leading your local chapter by focusing on growing your membership, inspiring the members of your chapter to get involved on the local, state, and national level, and attending state and national conferences. It's now my pleasure to turn this session over to our two special guests, FBLA National President Taylor Sarman and PBL National President Jake Baru. Both of these members have run successful officer campaigns on the local, state, and national levels. Taylor and Jake, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Mrs. Smothers, and good, more, good afternoon, FBLA PBL members and advisors. I'm your FBLA National President, Taylor Sarman, and I'm excited to be speaking to you this afternoon. Whether you're a member thinking about running for an office at any level of our organization, or an advisor helping your student prepare for an election or campaign, it's crucial that you understand the mission of the Future Business Leaders of America, Phi Beta Lambda. Our mission, to bring business and education together in a positive working relationship through innovative leadership and career development programs. Anytime you present in front of business, group, or ask for funding, they often ask you about the mission and what it means. So officers need to be prepared not only to say it, but understand what it means and expand upon some of the leadership and career programs like the BAA or CMAP awards, or even mention the March of Dimes, our national community service partner. In addition, having a firm knowledge of our mission and FBLA PBL programs will help our candidates successfully answer questions from voting delegates at the local, state, or national level. If you become a local, state, or national officer, your contribution will be measured in direct proportion to your understanding of the FBLA organization. In addition, many states offer different state projects, so it's very important to check with your state advisor and not only become knowledgeable about state projects, but also to help get your chapter actively involved in them. Arkansas FBLA PBL, for example, raises money statewide for the Children's Hospital each year. At the national level, one of the best programs that potential officer candidates can participate in is the Business Achievement Awards for FBLA and the Career and Membership Achievement Awards for PBL. These programs focus on participating in projects and activities designed to grow local chapters. Sometimes, something that is critical for candidates at any level of the organization to participate in. Candidates or potential candidates. If you do not make the March 1st BAA cutoff deadline for this year, no problem. You can have your advisor register you for the program and start working on it now for recognition in the 2012-13 membership year. There's no paperwork, and best of all, everything's online and interactive. Finally, don't be afraid to be creative and think outside of the box and propose ideas for new local, state, or even national projects. One of my platform goals when running for FBLA national president last year was to introduce a new national service and sync project. This project, which involved reading to younger students, was completed by chapters throughout the country during FBLA PBL week in February. Did you know that our national website lets you submit ideas for national projects? 
we'll check out the new Innovation Center on our website. Maybe the next national activity or project will be your own idea. Now, Jake Peru, a three-term PBL national officer, will discuss the importance of attending conferences and offer some tips as to how to score a campaign win. Thank you, Taylor. Hello, members and advisors. I'm Jake Peru, your PBL national president. FBLA and PBL members have the opportunity to travel at the local, state, and national levels. With more than a quarter of a million members in FBLA PBL, we have a vast network at our fingertips. Meeting members at conferences is a great way to get your name out there and potentially find a job. More importantly, this is a great conference for local and state officers to interact with other officers from throughout the country and share successful projects and ideas. Candidates for national office will have the opportunity to speak to conference attendees and interact with voting delegates for two days in the campaign hall. The 2012 National Leadership Conference, which will be held in San Antonio, Texas, will feature motivational sessions on a variety of topics and offer such attractions as the Alamo, SeaWorld, and Six Flags. Whether you're a local or a state officer, I encourage you to attend the Institute for Leaders, which will be held in conjunction with the National Leadership Conference. Did you know that there are sessions designed just for FBLA and PBL officers? These innovative workshops will concentrate on providing officers with strategies for public relations, corporate partnerships, participation in FBLA PBL leadership programs, and tips on how to make FBLA or PBL the must-join organization on campus. National officers are encouraged but not required to attend IFL. Now let's turn to how to organize a winning officer campaign. There are different requirements for offices at each level of our organization. Advisors have the duties of the different officer positions for the local and national levels in their FBLA or PBL chapter management handbooks. For state officer positions, please contact your state advisor. Make sure you review the duties and the qualifications for the office that you're seeking. Get a copy of the campaign guidelines and rules. The most important thing you can do is talk to the current officer for, for the level and or position for which you want to run. By doing this, you can find out what to expect if you are elected, uh, including time commitment required, conferences and meetings that you'll need to attend, etc. You can also find out about the current project that you can include in your campaign program. Now that we've talked about the different levels of officers that FBLA PBL has, let's focus on preparing a national campaign. Did you know that many members decide to run for national officer, office when they're freshmen or sophomores? They begin climbing up the leadership ladder and focusing on building their experience with competitive events, leadership positions, and participating in national programs. Let's take a look at the requirements for the different national officer positions. Only active members are eligible to hold national office dues must be paid by March 1st for FBLA or by April 15th for PBL. A candidate must have at least one full year remaining in his or her business program. He or she must also hold or have held an elective office in his or her local or state chapter. For PBL, candidates must hold or have held an elective office in their local chapter corresponding to or higher than the one that they are applying for. A candidate must be present at the National Leadership Conference and officially certified by the Officer Screening Committee to be eligible to campaign. Now, let's focus on the position of the five regional vice presidents. These national officers assist the presenting and promotion and development of the respective regions and focus on membership growth and retention. Also, these officers preside at the two regional meetings at the National Leadership Conference and manage regional websites and action councils. Candidates for this position give their two-minute campaign speech at the regional campaign rally. A 15-minute question and answer session immediately following the campaign speeches also occurs in this session. Each state may nominate members of the parliamentary procedure team representing them at the National Leadership Conference or the individual who scored the highest on the written parliamentary procedure test at their state leadership conference as a candidate for national parliamentarian. Candidates for this position must attend the candidate briefing session and take the written parliamentary procedures exam at the National Leadership Conference. Since this office is a non-elected position, candidates for national parliamentarian are the only candidate that do not go through candidate interviews. The individual that has met the qualifications for office, filed the application, and has scored the highest on the written parliamentary procedure exam is appointed to this position. Once appointed, the officer's main duty is to advise the president 
of the orderly conduct of business in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order and our association's bylaws. This year's National FBLA Parliamentarian, Nadine Goldberg, promoted parliamentary knowledge and awareness by producing a quarterly newsletter for state and chapter parliamentarians throughout the country. The National Parliamentarian also spearheads the team's public relations plan to promote the March of Dimes, our national community service partner. Candidates for national treasurer must have completed one year of accounting, bookkeeping, or record keeping by the time of their election at the National Leadership Conference. This officer is responsible for keeping an accurate record of all the national officer travel throughout the year and manages the National Treasurer's Council. One of the main responsibilities of this office is to spearhead a student campaign to obtain new sponsorships, exhibitors, and scholarships. This year's FBLA National Treasurer, Drew Marks, has already secured $3,000 that will be used to sponsor one of the FBLA competitive events at this year's National Leadership Conference in San Antonio, Texas. Finally, the National Treasurer also helps to secure items to make the NLC silent auction a success. Candidates for National Secretary must possess the ability to take minutes and have completed one year of typewriting or keyboarding instruction by the time of their election at the National Leadership Conference. This officer is responsible for preparing the National Officer Team Program of Work, minutes of conference calls and meetings, a spreadsheet with contact information for state key contacts, keep track of all National Officer travel, and prepare a monthly team summary report of activities. This person also is responsible for reminding the other officers about deadline dates and articles for national publications and preparing the National Officer Team electronic scrapbook at the end of the year. This year, both the FBLA and PBL National Secretaries have done a great job of using social media and working with their teams to write blog posts, posting on the FBLA PBL National Facebook page, as well as sending tweets. And finally, the FBLA PBL National Presidents must be able to motivate his or her team. This officer presides over national officer team meetings and business meetings of FBLA or PBL depending on which division he or she belongs to. This officer is a member of the National Board of Directors and at National Officer Training is responsible for directing the National Officer Team Program of Work, which focuses on four areas, customer service, relationships, resources, and image and awareness. This person must have strong communication skills because he or she communicates with state officers and state advisors throughout the year and is responsible for, for the creating and presenting of the National Officer Mid-Year Report in January as well as the annual report in the summer at the Board of Directors meeting. He or she also represents the organization at trade shows such as the National Business Education Association and the Association of Career and Technical Education. If you're planning and applying for a National Officer position for the 2012-13 membership year, here are some things that you can start working on right now. First, print off the National Officer Candidate Guide and application forms from the national website. Review the qualifications and rules with your local advisors. Second, contact your state advisor and find out the procedure that your state has for nominating national officer candidates. Third, once your state approves your application, they will then sign off on it and forward it to the National Center to the attention of Ms. Jean Buckley. It must be received by May 15th. The fourth thing to remember is start making a plan and be sure to select your campaign manager. The fifth thing is to set a budget for your campaign. And remember, at the national level, there's a $2,000 limit. You will also need to prepare a financial statement showing your income and your expenses for your campaign. And finally, at the national level, usually the entire state gets behind their national officer candidate. So be sure to make a contact sheet for your campaign staff. And in the late stages of your campaign, make a schedule for the National Leadership Conference. I would recommend having four or five members sign up for different shifts during the different campaign hours. Your speech, although it's only two minutes, is one of the most important parts of your national officer campaign. Some candidates use a cordless microphone without the podium, while other candidates do use the podium. Use the style that makes you the most comfortable and will allow you to present a polished final product. The time is monitored and strictly enforced. Some things to remember about your campaign speech. No audiovisual equipment may be used during campaign speeches and business attire must be worn. Only the National Officer Candidate 
may participate in the speech. There are no introductions, skits, or props allowed. Successful candidates tie in both a theme and their platform ideas or goals. Remember, the earlier you work on your speech, the more input you can get from others, deliver it in front of the entire chapter, and even a speech or forensics coach at your school. Remember, prepare your questions that you think delegates might ask you while campaigning. And also remember the most important thing, practice, practice, practice. Make sure that your platform and goals are attainable. Many candidates come up with a colorful booth display and a catchy theme. For example, FBLA National Treasurer Drew Marks used Earn high marks for FBLA. Vote Drew Marks for National Treasurer. Tie your theme into every aspect of your campaign and be creative. As you're planning your campaign and working on materials such as posters, involve as many local chapter members as you can. When you get to the National Leadership Conference, make sure that all the members of your state are enthused and on board. It will show. Always plan for more materials than you'll need, especially any brochures or flyers that contain your qualifications and goals. Also, remember to smile and be enthused whenever you're in public, no matter what. Finally, make sure that you have a positive relationship with your opponents. Another important thing to remember while campaigning is that the impression that you make on other people will have a significant impact on how they judge the entire association. As one of the major duties of an FBLA PBL national officer is to serve as an ambassador of our organization at state conferences, trade shows, and national conferences. The thing that determines the typical candidate from the strong candidate is the question and answer session following the campaign speeches and how candidates handle questions from delegates during campaign booth hours. Remember to project yourself as a professional student leader and show enthusiasm when you speak about FBLA PBL. Always be sure to have an elevator speech prepared, no more than 30 seconds to a minute long, to give to anyone prior to answering the first question. For example, while I campaigned in Orlando, my elevator speech was as follows. FBLA has been such a great impact in my life and given me the confidence and skills to prepare for college and my future career. As your next national president, I would love the opportunity to help make those goals the same reality for all of our members. One of the other most important things that you need to focus on with your campaign brochure is your campaign goals. Voting delegates want to know what you're going to do for our organization and ultimately how it will affect their local and state chapters. Your brochure should have an attractive and easy to read layout. Photos and graphics are a big help. Remember, current national officers can answer questions and advise, but they cannot provide testimonials or endorsements of any kind to candidates. Any photos of the candidates and current national officers should not be put in brochures as national officers are to remain objective. Many candidates also include a letter to the delegates as part of their campaign literature. Each national officer candidate, with the exception of the national parliamentarian, is assigned to an area in the campaign hall for two days of campaigning. This is a 10 by 10 area, so all items must fit within those dimensions. Successful candidates have a campaign theme, brochures that clearly define their goals, candy, and theme items. Many candidates get donations of either items or money to help defray their campaign costs. There's a $2,000 limit for campaign booths and items. Candidates and campaign staff must be dressed in business attire and must remain in their campaign area. Thanks, Jake and Taylor. That was some great information. Here are some of the top things you should remember. Number one, applications for now all national officer candidates have a receipt deadline of May 15th. All national officer candidates must attend the candidate briefing session at the NLC. This session will take place at 7.30 p.m. and for PBL will be on June 23rd and for FBLA on June 28th. All candidates, with the exception of the national parliamentarian, must go through interview screening. All national officer candidates, again with the exception of the parliamentarian, must have a campaign booth and must present a campaign speech at the NLC. Voting will be done by ballot with a majority vote required for election. If a majority is not reached, we do in our association read the teller's report prior to re-voting. 
Finally, there will be a mandatory new officer orientation breakfast for new officers, their local advisors, and their state advisors from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on the morning following the Awards of Excellence program. The meeting attire is business casual. Okay, thank you, Lisa. We had a number of questions submitted during the presentation, and we'll start getting to those now. If we run out of time, we will email you individually to answer any question that we're not able to get to. Okay, so it looks like the first question we have is from Dina in Wisconsin. Uh, looks, this is a great question for both of you, Taylor and Jake. Uh, Dina wants to know what's the number one advice that you would give a new national officer candidate. Jake, do you want to start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, having run three campaigns, well, my first campaign was as parliamentarian, so I was just that was just an elected position. But for both of the campaigns where you actually have to um, give a speech and, and really um, network with people, my advice is just to have a really great campaign manager that that uh, understands your goals and is willing to help you because that's uh, they do a lot of behind the scenes work and they're just a great resource to have to help you to, to win that campaign. Great. And Taylor, what about you? What would be the number one advice you would give somebody running for office? Well, when I ran for national president, one of the things that I really focused on was knowing the goals of our association, the mission statement, and the creed. Um, and so that's the advice I would give. Definitely know um, the history of our organization front to back. Um, because I think a lot of the voting delegates and a lot of people who are going to ask you questions throughout the, the week of campaigning uh, want to make sure that you have a firm understanding of our association, uh, just like we mentioned in today's PowerPoint. Thanks, Taylor. Okay, Jana from Florida um, is interested to know what's the most memorable moment this year so far as a national officer? Taylor, I think I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one of the most memorable things that I got to experience as the national president was uh, traveling to New York City, which is just an amazing city, and you, know, you have to do a lot of great traveling uh, being a national officer. Uh, but there in New York City at Education Nation, I got to meet um, President Bill Clinton and uh, had a photo op with him for a little bit. Um, and I think it's just one of those greater highlights of, of my, my term as national president, along with all the great travel. Um, and you meet a lot of really cool and exciting people uh, when you're national president. Not only people like President Clinton, but also um, some really cool and amazing members of our association. That's awesome. Jake, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and like Taylor said, we do have a lot of um, great opportunities to travel and meet people. Uh, later this month and next month, I'll be traveling to um, Nebraska and North Carolina. And lastly, um, my most memorable moment, which hasn't actually even happened yet, um, is going to be my trip to Puerto Rico's, uh, their PBL State Leadership Conference next month. Uh, I'm very excited just because I'm a, I'm a marketing and Spanish double major at UW-Madison, so I'm, I'm going to have the, the chance to go experience a different culture, and I get to give my greetings in Spanish, which will be a beyond amazing experience. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well... Looks like we have a couple of questions from Donnie Iorio. We all recognize that name. Hi, Donnie. It's <laughs> nice to see you online with us. Um, Donnie wants to know, uh, Lisa, for PBL, um, are, is the PBL advisor required to attend the NLC in order to run uh, for a member of national office? Well, that's a great question, Donnie. And for PBL, we realize oftentimes um, you know, it's a little bit harder for the students. So we never say that we require the local advisor really at any level. They're encouraged to attend, but it's really not required. Um, I would really recommend if you have the campaign manager that they attend with you because they'll really understand kind of an overall picture a little bit better. And if you can get your state advisor to attend, that's great as well. But we all know that they also have things that are doing in their time commitments at the NLC. hope that answers your question. Okay, and Donnie also wants to know, Lisa, if you could clarify the $2,000 budget. Um, like, for example, would a MacBook Pro count as $1,300 or a TV count as $300? Oh, meaning if he had, like, his laptop in the booth. Mm -hmm. Generally, we... Um 
we rec we code everything at fair market value. Um, so, but if it's something that you own, which I'm assuming that's probably what he owns, knowing Donnie, I know he he has a great equipment. <laughs> um, you basically the rule is is you have to rent it to yourself. So what I tell all of the candidates is you rent it to yourself for a dollar. Oh yeah, that's a great deal. <laughs> And we also talk about this in the letter that I send out to all candidates because yeah, it's really hard when you own your own equipment. You really, it's not fair to require you to put that at a fair market value because that's not something you're going to go out and buy. Okay. All right, uh, Lisa. This is another technical question for you, uh, Danielle um, or Daniel Morales um, says. What if our school doesn't offer a business program, but instead a career-oriented program? like Cisco networking or dental aid, et cetera, how would we run for a national office? Well, that's also a really great question. And actually, in our organization, we thought about this several years ago when we really changed the requirements for membership to a business or a business-related class. So business-related really, I mean, a lot of the students are having to take more of the academic and career classes. So they can't always fit in the traditional classes. So um, business related would be those career classes or anything even if you're looking at current events or uh, economics because sometimes that's taught in the history department or um, maybe you're taking an interviewing class in the English department so if you can relate back to business it's going to be a business related class so that pretty much just about includes everybody okay. I mean there are a couple offices that have stricter requirements for that such as the secretary um, having like the traditional keyboarding Mm -hmm. or the accounting or recording for the treasurer, but the other offices are pretty much wide open. Okay, so that's good news for Daniel. Okay, so now a bunch of questions for you, Jake and Taylor. Um, how about I give this one to you, Taylor. Um, what is one thing you would have done differently with your national campaign? That's a great question. And that comes from Nicholas Western. Oh, uh, well, one of the things I think um, I would have been a little bit more prepared for was um, the strains that would be put on a person's voice when they're running for national office. <laughs> um, I, for, for anybody who was at NLC or has heard the story, I actually lost my voice um, halfway through the campaign process at NLC. Um, so definitely one thing I would change is I would um, talk a lot less when it wasn't important and talk <laughs> a lot more when it was really important. Yeah, and take a lot of honey with you, right? <laughs> exactly, and tea. Tea helped a lot. Good. Okay, Jake, I'm going to give this next one to you. It comes from Dawn Lillis. Um, what kind of advice would you give a sophomore running for a state officer position? Um, that's a very good question, and I actually did run for a state officer position as a sophomore. Um, the most important advice I can give you is just to be confident with your campaign and, and, and your speech. As long as you know the organization well, like Taylor was saying, know the history, um, know your state uh, guidelines in specific, uh, age really shouldn't be an issue. I ran for national office as a freshman as well, so if, you, if you're comfortable knowing everything that you should, that you, you should know to be prepared for your campaign, uh, you should be ready as a freshman, sophomore, or a senior. It's all about preparation. Okay, Taylor, how about I give this one to you? It's from Ann Lee. She knows, how would you approach businesses to ask them for donations when running for state VP? Well, one of the things that I did, when both when I ran for state office and for national office, is I sent out a letter um, to the businesses that I had um, contact with or had had a close relationship with. Um, a letter is a really great professional way to make the first go. Um, and then the second thing you have to do when, after you send a letter is do a quick follow-up with a phone call um, or even a personal visit. Personal visits are a good thing to capitalize on when you're asking for a donation. Um, but definitely send a letter, make a follow-up via phone call or personal visit, um, and be sure to be personable and explain what it is what you're doing, explain FBLA, um, capitalize on those important things that um, are about our association so the business can better understand what they're helping you support. Um, yeah, those face-to-faces, yeah, sorry, those face-to-faces are so important. It's a lot easier to say no in an email, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a lot harder to say no to someone in person. 
Yeah. Okay. And, and, and mm -hmm. the same is true too with a letter. Not, not too many people send letters these days, mm -hmm. and people, were, I think, really enjoy getting that contact as well. That's true. Okay, um, Jake, Alexander Everett would like to know, um, what did you include in your speech? Um, oh, he actually, I'm sorry, asked about FBLA, but how PBL affects you, your future, et cetera. So I guess Alexander wants to know specifically what you talked about. In my campaign speech? Mm-hmm. Well, it, w it was a little bit more um, circumstantial because I was back in in Orlando, which was the site of my first uh, national leadership conference way back when I was 15, my fr freshman year in high school in FBLA. That's awesome. Um, so that was, a, that was a great conference, and I, I really wanted to tie that in to kind of show um, how long I've been involved in the organization. Mm -hmm. I touched on the, the different officer positions that I've held that have helped to prepare me for this experience. And then um, always when I'm, when I'm running for an office, um, people – Everyone that's running for an office is obviously going to be someone that's that's qualified to some extent. So I think what set, sets me apart when I'm giving my speeches is the fact that I stress on how passionate I am about the organization and how much I love it. Great. Taylor, do you want to add uh, to that since Alexander was asking specifically about FBLA? Yeah, definitely. I think Jake hit, um, hit, it, hit it with the, the last part that he mentioned about um, you know, talking about how passionate uh, he is about PBL. I mean, that's one of the things that I tried to capitalize on um, in my national presence, which is how passionate I was uh, and still am about FBLA and the amazing things that it's done for my life. Um, and also, one of the things I hit on, too, was the fact that uh, I was going to be committed to making sure that FBLA, the same impact it had on my life, uh, it had on the countless other students who come in through our association. So I think you know, making it personal, talking a little bit about you and your values. Um, you only get two minutes, so it's important to hit on some some of the key things like like who you are and what you want to do with the association and ultimately what the association's done for you. Great. And Alexander, by the way, Taylor um, wrote a great blog post last month in February, which was CTE Month. And if you want to read that, it really tells how, you know, Taylor, um, how career technical education and how FBLA in particular has changed his life. So if you want to get any ideas from that blog post, you can uh, find the link to our blog um, on our homepage. And uh, gosh, it was in February, so you might have to scroll down a little bit. Or you can just uh, click on uh, Taylor's link there on the left, and then you'll find all of Taylor's posts so far this year. OK, um, it looks like. Daniel had another question. What is some advice on the interview screening part when running for state or national? For example, Miami-Dade requires an interview prior to allowing you to run for state officer. So I guess some tips for the interview screening part. Either one want to uh, ask, yeah, answer yeah, that one? Yeah, I can touch on that. This okay. is Jake. Um, we we do obviously like some some of the states like Florida like to do uh, screening processes and interviews and we do that at the national level as well um, and it's a great idea to just have uh, drafts of your your material there so you can go over it and make changes to things that you might need to um, as well as as ask questions of your state advisor it really can be an interactive interview so that way you can get your questions answered and make sure you're going through the process the, the right way. Thanks. Okay, Jacob Elpern um, is curious, how many campaign staff do you suggest should be on the team? Taylor, I think you mentioned um, in your part of the webinar, like four to five people. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think four to five is a good number to have. You want to you wanna capitalize on one of them being your campaign manager. Um, and then a handful of other um, you know, friends or other members of the association to just be at the booth um, and make sure they know, you know your goals and things about you and can express your story just as well as you can while you're at the booth or while you might be away from the booth. That's good advice. Okay, uh, Jake Evan McIntyre wants to know um, what's different about running for state office when compared to running for national office? I think it's uh, obviously the, there's a size difference when you when you get to the national level. Um, and at the state level, you can really tailor things to things that are specific to your state. Like mm -hmm. your, your state may be running 
uh, different programs. Like we mentioned, Arkansas does a lot with um, a, with a ch with a children's hospital. You could uh, maybe cater some sort of platform goal around how you're going to, to help uh, reach that goal for the next year. Um, at the national level, it's, it's a lot more um, just the national level as a whole and making your goals a little bit more universal. Great. Uh, okay, Taylor, I'll give this one back to you. Uh, another campaign staff question. Um, what did you look for when picking a campaign manager in specific, um, the manager? And this comes from Alexander Everett. Well, one of the big things that I thought was going to be very important for my campaign manager to do um, is to be able to talk about me just like I'd be able to talk about me because, um, you know, ultimately you're the person seeking office and the, it's about what you want to do for the association. So when you're picking a campaign manager, make sure that they're comfortable being out there in front of the booth, um, talking about you, talking about your values and your goals and what you see the future of our association being. Um, and also, you know, along with the, the being out front person, person mm -hmm. uh, make sure they're comfortable, you know, handling all of the nitpicky things that are going to come up in the, the process before you get to the National Leadership Conference, like ordering materials, helping you draft brochures. Um, I know my campaign manager uh, listened to my speech uh, probably over a hundred times, so <laughs> you want to make sure that that person is, is in it for the long haul with you. Mm -hmm. And is in it for the right reasons, right, Taylor? It's they're there to support you. Definitely, I definitely think that's important. Okay, that's wow. Well, we have a ton of great questions. I hope we have time to get to all of them. Um, Michael Graham, uh, he's been involved with PBL and FBLA for two and a half years, and he'd like to run for a state office. What? should be his first steps. Lisa, um, do you want to chime in on this one, his first steps? Sure. Um, I think that if you're interested in running for a state office, the first thing that, that I would do if I were you or I would recommend is talking to the current state officer of the position that you want to run for and just finding out kind of what are some of the things that office entails, kind of maybe what are some of the current state projects and things like that. Obviously then you really want to talk to your local advisor because you really need their support. Um, talk to them about some things and tell them that you're really interested in running and then from there I mean just start developing your goals and your platform. What you really need to do is contact the state advisor and kind of find out what the state qualifications and guidelines are because every state's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So um, get all that down and, and going. But you know, it's really fun. And when I was a student, I was also um, a state officer on the college level of Phi Beta Lambda. So it, it's an exciting time. And I'm sure that Jake and Taylor can tell you a state office is a great way to start getting involved. You just really get out there and you're being that ambassador. Right. Um, and Michael, if you want to contact any of our national officers, um, all of their email addresses are on our website. So if it's FBLA, just click on the red FBLA tab at the top, and I believe the very first link is for um, the national officers, and the same goes for PBL. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to Riley Hughes. He is running at the state level, and um, he knows that oftentimes people campaign with the change in mind that they want to make for the organization. What would you recommend um, that the state officers say if, if we love FBLA the way it is and they aren't sure what they would change about it? Taylor, any advice on that one? Yeah, I mean, I think if if you if there's nothing that you want to see um, changed in your state, then I mean, capitalize on that. Talk about how great of a state association you have, um, and be sure that people understand that you truly do believe that, and that you truly are committed um, to continuing the success that your state's had. I mean, a lot of states are very successful, um, and and some states might not necessarily need new changes to programs or anything like that. So. Yeah. I think that, that that's a great idea and just capitalize on it. So maybe Riley in this case should really focus on recruitment and retention and of course growing numbers in his state and that's always positive. And if he really thinks that there is nothing he would want to change, then maybe he should focus on, you know, all the great things that there is, you know, yeah, in exactly. FBLA in his state. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely membership, retention and recruitment is is always a plus. I agree with you there. Okay, um, 
Oh, this is a good question for you, Jake. Uh, Jacob Elperin is back with um, another question. Do you recommend running for both state and national office in the same year? I have actually done that. My mm -hmm. freshman year, I ran for um, a local officer position. I ran for state vice president and then national parliamentarian. And it was a lot of work. And, wow. and I will say that I probably did overcommit myself that year. But it all is, is totally dependent on on what positions you're accepting or, or you're, you're trying to run for. And, and this, like this last year when I ran for national president, I made sure that I wasn't running for a state or a local officer position because I wanted to make sure I dedicated 100% of my time to this national officer position. So it's, it's really about what positions you're running for and the time commitment um, expected. We have, we have officers every year that are state officers as well as national officers. So it's not, not an uncommon thing at all. So if you feel that you can handle it, I say, I say go for it. It just depends on the person. Thanks. Um, okay, Harry Harwell. Uh, or Harold, sorry about that. Um, Harry wants to know, uh, he's running for state office right now, and he wants to know what's the best way that he could be effective to the national officer team. I'm assuming that's, I'm guessing Harry wants to know once he's elected, what's the best way that a state officer can help you guys out at the national level? Well, I mean, I'll take that one. Okay. And I think one of the things that you know I've really appreciated from um, from our fabulous state officers that we have all over the country is their willingness to connect with me and let me know what's going on in uh, in their own state chapters. For example, Nebraska this year is celebrating their 50th anniversary, and so the state president uh, from Nebraska and I have been communicating regularly on on updates that that are happening um, in their state. And I know that as a national officer, that's one of the the great things that I get to hear about. Um, and also, you know, being willing to help us um, increase our membership and talk about ideas that we can do that, that's going to be a really important thing for, for state officers um, to do and connect with uh, as national officers. Thanks, Taylor. Okay. Um, uh, Jake, this is a particular question, I think, for, for you in Wisconsin. Um, and it comes from an advisor, um, would they be able to run for Wisconsin State Office even if UWEC doesn't currently have a PBL chapter, although they're involved in virtual PBL? Yep, and, and even though uh, UW Eau Claire doesn't have a chapter and you're a virtual member, we still recognize you as a, as a member of the state of Wisconsin. So we we, we encourage those members to come to our state conference, and um, we really encourage anyone affiliated with Wisconsin chapter to run for state office. Okay, that's good news for you. Um, okay, uh, Lisa, I think this might be a great question for you. What are some ways to filter the local officers, um, at lo local candidates, to try to have a true election instead of a popularity contest. I bet that happens a lot in chapters. That's a great question. And I was an advisor for about 10 years, and I know that this is something that I struggled with, especially the first few years. Um, basically, what I would really do is I would have them nominated from the floor, um, you know, just like you would do in a regular meeting, but actually have them go through a campaign process, have them um, create posters and hang them in the school and have them give a speech and, you know, give them some requirements on what to focus on in the speech. So focus on, okay, what are some things that you want to do as a local chapter? What are some things that you want to do with the members? Because really I think when it comes down to voting, voting delegates, whether they're local, state, or national, they're pretty smart. They're going to want to elect somebody that's going to do something for them and help the chapter out. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of chapters where they just do, they nominate and they just do like a hand vote or voice vote or whatever. The final mm -hmm. thing that I would do is I would actually make it a secret ballot vote because I think when you're doing a ballot vote, people are much more likely to vote for the strongest candidates. That's great advice, a secret ballot. Yeah. Okay, and this is going to be our final question, and I'm going to give it uh, to you, Lisa, again. Um, Alexander is a freshman this year in high school, and he's new to FBLA, but 
Um, he wants to know what we recommend for him to get the word out for support and help because they're not allowed to campaign before the Florida State Conference. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing that you can do, and we have that same rule at the national level as well, and it makes it hard nowadays with social media, so you really have to be careful of what you're doing um, because things can be construed as getting the word out, you know, with the Facebook and all that, mm -hmm. but concentrate on your local level, gathering the support of your local members because um, I can give you a really good example. The first year that we ever ran a candidate from my local chapter, I mean, we actually that same year we formed a chapter, so we never had a chapter before, and then um, we had a chapter, and all of the local members that went to state, they were wearing something, whether it was like a campaign button or a ribbon just for supporting the candidate, and they were working the campaign booth, and I'm not sure how the Florida rules are. Every state, again, is different, um, but if your local chapter supports you, uh, that's great, you know. I mean, I've seen campaigns at the state and national level where some of the campaign people, they actually had shirts with the students' names on it. Again, take a look at the rules. Do you have a campaign hall? Is it business attire? If not, a lot of states don't do business attire in the campaign hall, and they do like t-shirts and things like that. So I think sometimes it's almost a way of being creative with how you're going about your campaigning. And again, I, I truly believe that if you have a great platform and as Taylor and Jake said, if you have a passion and you're enthused about FBLA and PBL, the, the voting delegates are going to know that and they're going to pick up on that because that one year that we had that new chapter, my student won and, I mean, we were, nobody knew who we are. <laughs> so, I mean, those are things you really can concentrate on. So lobby at your local level. Awesome. Okay, well, that's all the time we have uh, for today. Um, I apologize if we didn't get uh, to your specific question, but um, please email us at the uh, email address you see there, um, or if you have a specific question for Taylor, Taylor's email address is fblaprez at fbla.org, and Jake's email address is pblprez at fbla.org. And please don't forget to connect with us on social media. And you'll see there our YouTube channel. That's where um, you can replay this webinar tomorrow or um, share it with your friends. Please do so. And don't forget uh, to register for our next webinar, which will be on Wednesday, April 25th, again at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. This webinar is going to be Road to San Antonio, and it will feature our conference director and our education director, and they're going to team up to tell you everything you need to know about preparing for San Antonio. And also on our YouTube channel, you'll find all of the past webinars we've done so far this year and a few from last year. Um, and some great information there, and it makes for great um, content for your next uh, local chapter meeting as well. So don't forget about those. Um, thank you again, Lisa, uh, Taylor, and Jake. You were all really great today. Um, Thank you, everyone, for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week, and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Take care.